reminding us today that during uncertain and shaky times, we serve a God who absolutely is not shaken. I don't know about you, but I am grateful that I have a Savior, that I have a God that I can lean into in uncertain times. And when the world is shaken around me, that Savior is not shaken. And man, I hope that excites you today. I hope that gives you a reason to celebrate even deeper. Today, again, I just want to say thank you. Thank you so much. I'm blown away. I'm blown away. The numbers were just given to me. The hundreds of people that are gathered with us online right now doing church together in the name of Jesus, united together in, in one spirit, one body, not in proximity, but man, we are together in spirit. And I'm so, so grateful that you are joining us today from the other side of a device somewhere. And I am just grateful that God is bigger than the circumstances that we face God is bigger than the challenges that we face in this world. And God is the one who's given man the wisdom to create technology, to enable us to do church this way. And I don't know about you, but I'm grateful for it. I told our team as we were talking last week, if we can't find ways to make opportunities out of obstacles, well, we need to work a little harder because God gives us wisdom in times like these to find good in everything. And I'm just so grateful for what God's doing today. Many of you are wondering, why would we do church this way? Let me just answer some of those questions for you before I I go to the, I go to the, the word today and preach for just a moment. It's really important to me that we be balanced in our obedience to God's word. And not only has God called us to be people of faith and faithful, God has also told us to be people who are respectful and obedient to the authority that God has placed over us. And when you look around our country today, from the the Oval Office all the way down to our governor, to the offices here in our local community here in Athens, they have requested, they have said that it is not only recommended, strongly suggested, but they've said it is is for the health and the well-being of our community. And we knew that we had to be faithful to those who God has placed over us. So after a great deal of prayer, after a great deal of discussion, after we had a lot of time to talk to our coronavirus prevention team who is made up of two of our local doctors who are very active in prevention in this community and two local businessmen in our church who are very, very active in large companies in the educational system in our community, our board and our staff made a very, very difficult decision that this isn't what's easy, but it's what's right for the well-being of our community and for the well-being of our state. And we've just asked God to please honor us as we did our best to honor those in authority over us and to honor the rest of humanity around us. So here's what we know. We know that God is good all the time. We know that God is faithful all the time. We know that God never is shaken. And we know that God is a very present help in every time of trouble. And we know that God is where we are right now. Whether you woke up early, you got dressed up and put on your Sunday best, or whether you're still watching in your pajamas, he's the same God everywhere. And we are grateful, grateful for that. Let me just say one more thing. Our team that has gathered, our worship team and our media team and those who have helped to put this, uh, put this service on for you online, we have been very, very diligent in practicing our, our social um, interaction and large gathering and making sure that we have limited our touch and limited our proximity for the protection of everyone. We would never not do what we're asking you to to do. So I just want you to know that we're being faithful, faithful to that. Well, let's go into God's Word for just a few minutes today. I want to preach to you today for a a moment on owning our peace. I didn't want to talk about fear. I didn't want to talk about anxiety. I wanted to talk about the solution to those things, and that is peace. I want to talk to you for a few minutes today about a peace that isn't borrowed. It isn't a peace that's touched and then given back. I want to talk to you about a peace that we can, that we can actually own it, because this is not an act of fear. We are not living by fear. We are living by faith. And faith tells us that God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. God is the same everywhere. The peace that he promises is a peace that we can't even understand, but we can own it. We can possess it. We can experience it, and we can can have it. And I just want you to know today that God has a peace for you that he wants to 
He wants to give you. He doesn't want you to, to, to have it on loan. He doesn't want you to give it back. He wants you to own it. He wants it to be your peace. And you would say, well, what does that even mean, Scott, to own my peace? Well, here's what that means. We all understand this, this thing called the pride of ownership. And, and you, you know it. I know it. It's that, it's that first bicycle that you got, and you owned it. You knew it was yours. It's the first car that you got. You owned it, and you, you knew it was yours. It's when you bought that first house and, oh, you were so proud that, that you owned that house. That was, that was your, I remember like it was yesterday when I got my first Jaguar. I was five years old. It wasn't a Jaguar like you're thinking about, but it was one of these little plastic pedal operated Jaguars. And I was at my fifth birthday party in Trenton, Florida. All my friends were gathered around the table. We had eaten the cake. We had drank the punch. And my mom and dad rolled out this big box with a pedal operated Jaguar in it and the boys couldn't wait to get outside we got outside we began to ride that baby around we began to pedal we began to pump we began to slide that thing around the corners and and, and you know what was great about that all my buddies at the party they could borrow it they could touch it but I owned it I didn't have to give it back nobody else could take it home it was my Jaguar and nobody could take it from me and when it comes to your peace that's what God wants you to know you can own your peace coronavirus can't take away your peace troubled times in our country can't take away your peace I'll never forget when we bought our daughter Hope her first cell phone boy she owned it I remember right now the smile that was on her face as she stood in front of that that phone store and we took her picture I remember my my little boy Harrison, when he got his first motorcycle, he walked downstairs on Christmas morning and he saw a motorcycle in the basement and he lit up because he knew no longer did he have to borrow one of the other boys. It was his. He owned it. And God wants you and I to be that way with our peace. God wants us to, to own our peace. He wants us to understand that he didn't give it to us so we can touch it and we can experience it and we can feel it and we can put its least. But God wants us to to understand he gives us a peace that we don't have to give back we don't have to return it it's it's ours it's a sustainable peace that doesn't change when things change around us and today I just want to encourage you in that because Jesus Jesus knew that that kind of peace was important so at a very troubled time in the lives of his disciples, it was, in fact, just before Jesus was going to go to the cross and he was going to be crucified, he knew the stress and he knew the pain that his disciples were going through. And the Bible says that he was concerned. Now, this is amazing to me because it says that Jesus, he was the one that was going to go through all the pain. He was the one that was going to be rejected. He was going to be beaten. He was going to be hung up on an old cross. But the Bible says that in that moment, Jesus was concerned about the troubled hearts of his disciples. And Jesus says something to his disciples that is very, very profound. And I think what he said to them on that day may be what he wants to say to us on this day. Jesus speaks to them in John chapter 14, verse 27. And here's what Jesus said. Peace I leave with you. And then Jesus takes it a little deeper and he says, my peace, I'm giving to you. And then Jesus goes even deeper and he says, I don't give to you as the world gives to you. Don't let your hearts be troubled and don't be afraid. Because it's my peace that I've given to you. You know, it's interesting how many people grow up in large families. And one of the things about large families is, is you practice hand-me-downs. I don't know about you, but, but you've had friends, or maybe many of you, you've grown up in families where you hand me down pants, and you hand me down t-shirts, and you hand me down t-shirts, or you hand me down a car, or you hand me down a gun, or you hand me down coins. And I remember being in friends' houses in large families, and everything that they wore was a hand-me-down from somewhere else. And I am so grateful that God... God doesn't give us hand-me-down peace. God says, my peace, I'm giving to you. My peace, I'm living to you. It's not a hand-me-down peace like the world gives. It's not a peace that's here today and you're going to have to give it away tomorrow. But it is a peace that is sustainable even in shaky times. And God says, that's the peace that I want to give to you. He says, I'm going to give you a peace not like the world gives. Not a peace that can be given today and taken away tomorrow. 
But he says, I'm going to give you my peace. And I know you're asking, well, what does that look like? Let me give you three characteristics of what the peace of God really looks like in all of our lives. When you get your peace, when I get my peace from God and not from our circumstances, here's what that peace looks like. Number one, number one, I hope you'll write this down. You can go to the app. If you're not on our app at Cornerstone Athens, Cornerstone Church Athens, you should go on that app because all the notes are there for you to follow along. All the information in the coming weeks is going to be on that app. Hopefully you'll download that app, but you can go there and follow along in these notes. If not, write them down somewhere because you need to remember this. God's peace, number one, does not change. God's peace is unchangeable. God's peace, it never, ever changes. Here's what I've learned. There will never be an emergency meeting in heaven about a virus that takes place on earth. God will never gather all the leadership of heaven around himself and say, you know what, this is shocking to us. There are things going on down there that we didn't see coming. We have to get our act together. No, here's what I know. Because God is God. He already has the right people in the right place and God already has the right plan for all of humanity. God's peace never changes. It's unchangeable. You can rest assured that the peace that God gives you, that peace will not change with new cycles. That peace will not change with new stories. That peace will not change with the events of the world that we live in. God's peace in you, God's peace in me is unchangeable. Number two, the second thing that we learn about peace that we get from God and peace that doesn't come from our circumstances or from the world we live in is this God's peace can never be earned you can't earn God's peace you can't be good enough to earn God's peace God doesn't give his peace to people who get the greatest awards or who have the greatest amount of money God doesn't give his peace to the people with the highest IQ God gives his peace to people who humble themselves and simply ask God for his peace peace you can't earn it you can just be humble enough to say God I don't have peace in the world I live in right now but I know that you've promised me a peace that goes beyond the world's understanding and that's the peace I know I don't deserve it I haven't done enough to earn it but thank you that it can't be earned it can only be requested so God I humble myself right now in this moment and I say I need heaven's peace His peace doesn't change. His peace can't be earned. And then number three, very, very important for you and I to remember about the peace of God is God's peace is never limited. God has peace that is unlimited. Here's what that means for you today. Wherever you are, wherever you're watching from, wherever you're joining us in church online, here's what that means. God's peace is there for you. God has peace enough for you. Here's what I know. God didn't throw all of his peace on Atlanta and say, well, Atlanta got all my peace, so there's no more peace for Athens. Here's what else I know. God's not going to put all of his peace on Athens and say, well, I've given all my peace to Athens, so there's no more of my peace for the rest of the world. No, God's peace is big enough to go around. God's peace is completely unlimited. And he wants you and he wants me to own his peace. He wants you and I to realize that he, his peace that he gives is not separated by time. It's the same peace that he gave his disciples the day before he went to the cross his peace isn't separated by proximity it doesn't matter if we're here in God's house or if we're at home in our house God's peace is the same it's not separated by space and the good news about our Savior is he wants you and I to be owners of that kind of peace and here's what I know about you today if you'll ask God for that peace God will give you that peace God will give you the peace that you ask him for. And here's what I love about Jesus. He loves us so much that he said he died so that we could have an abundant life, which means he won't just give us enough peace for us, but he'll give us enough peace to pass on to our friends and to pass on to our loved ones. And they will see his peace in us. And the peace that they see in us will generate hope for his peace in them. And my prayer is that as we pray today, and we're going to pray, My prayer is that God's peace would rest in each one of us and that we would walk through this day not only with a 
substantial overflow of peace in our own life. But we would have so much peace in us that it becomes contagious to the people that are around us. I'll never forget the times that I sit with families. Families at a hospital who just got news that one of their family members has a terminal illness. Or I sit with families maybe who've just lost a loved one. Or I, I sit with families who is going through a, a, a major move or, or, or change in their life. And, and it seems like the world has caved in upon them. And everything around them is, is, is shaky. It's just unstable. But someone within that family will speak up and they'll say, Scott, I don't understand it. I know that I should be shaken right now. I, I know that I should be moved right now. But for whatever reason, I have this peace and I feel like I'm stronger than ever before. And, and someone will always say something like, I mean, I, that's just weird to me that, that in my darkest hour, in my greatest time of need, I have this peace. And I, and I will say to them, no, that's not weird. That's God. Because that's when God does His greatest work. God does His greatest work in the moments of our greatest need. And today God wants you to know that His peace is available for you. His peace is available for me. And I know that most of you would agree with me that these are times that we need God's peace. This is a season that we need God's peace. And we're going to pray in just a moment. We're going to, to pray for our peace. We're going to pray for the peace of our nation and the peace of our world. We're going to invite God to invade our situation with His peace. He's not going to lease us peace. He's not going to loan us peace. He's not going to ask us to experience this peace and then give it back when we're finished with it. He's going to give us a peace that we can own for the rest of our lives. Yesterday I jumped on Facebook and I saw one of our board members' wives have, had posted an article. Uh, Megan Holland had posted an article about fear and anxiety in the world that we're facing today. And what she said was, was so good. She spoke to, to people who were feeling the pressure, who were feeling the anxiety of of the new cycles and the reality of this virus that's moving very quickly in our nation and she simply led them to Psalms 91 and she said if you're feeling stressed or pressure or anxious or fearful today I encourage you to go to Psalms 91 and read it over and over and over again until his peace washes over you and then she said something that was so profound. She said, let that prayer, let that reading of Psalms 91, let it be, let it be your song. Let it be your prayer. Let it be your hope. I thought that was such a powerful, powerful reminder of what God is calling us to. He's calling us to prayer. You know, we can, we can choose worship over worry. And we can, we can choose faith over fear. And we can, we can choose prayer over panic. But it's only sustainable if our peace is sustainable. So my prayer is today that, that each one of us, we would lean, in, lean into the availability of a peace that we can own from God. So that we can with peace choose to worship over worry we can choose to pray over panic we can we can choose in that moment faith over fear how can we do those things because we own our peace because it's not on loan we don't have to give it back we we own our peace I read something yesterday through some of my friends on a on a text thread that we have and one of them posted something that was so profound from Martin Luther back in the early early 1500s or late 1400s Martin Luther 
Most of you will remember he was one of the leaders in the the Protestant Reformation. He was a a preacher and he was a a teacher and he was a theologian. And he was was battling a season back during the uh, bubonic plague when 25 million people around the world had died. A third of the continent had died because of this infection. This isn't fear that I'm going to read to you. This is faith from a leader, a Christian leader in the early 1500s, the the leader of the Protestant Reformation. This is what he said that many years ago. He said, I shall ask God's mercy to protect us. Then I shall fumigate, help purify the air, administer medicine, and take medicine. I shall provide, I shall avoid places and persons where my presence is not needed in order not to become contaminated and thus perchance inflict or pollute others and so to cause their death as a result of my negligence. If God should wish to take me, he certainly knows how to find me. I have done what he has expected of me and so I am not responsible for either my own death or the death of others I will do these things I if my neighbor needs me I shall not avoid places or persons I shall go freely as stated above this is such a God-fearing faith why because it is neither brash nor foolhardy And it does not tempt God. The works of Luther, volume 43, page 132. I read that and I thought, that is a man who leads with wisdom and who leads with faith. My prayer is for all of the leaders in our nation, the leaders in our community, our religious and civic leaders, our educational leaders, our healthcare leaders, that we would lead with faith, and we would lead with wisdom. A couple of days ago, our president, Donald Trump, he declared that today would be a national day of prayer. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to pray. We're going to, to pray. We're going to ask for God to protect our nation, to protect our world, and to give wisdom to our leaders. Some of our board members have come today, and um, I remind you again that we have done our best to, to practice social distancing they're going to come and join me on the platform now they they wanted to be here in support of our team that was going to be here able to bring this this worship service online to you today I've asked some of them to join me in praying for our nation today so what I'd like for you to do I'd like for you to join with us in prayer today is as declared by our president a national day of prayer and I'm going to ask all of you to to pray with us today as they come first Darius Ross is going to come and Darius is going to pray for our president and our nation our our state leaders our local leaders our national and world leaders and then Brandon Smith is going to come and Brandon is going to pray for our medical professionals as they care and administer help to those that are in need he's going to pray for our research teams that they would quickly find a vaccination and cure for this coronavirus and then Denoris Ross is going to come and Denoris is going to pray for people and families that have been affected infected by this disease and he's going to pray for our diligence and our protection against it for those who have not experienced this disease and then Bobby Holland is going to come last and Bobby Holland is going to pray that God's peace would overcome our fear God's peace would overcome our anxiety in the world that we live in today So I'm going to ask Darius to come first, and let's pray together as a people. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you for such a great nation. Lord God, we know nothing catches you by surprise. Father, as we pray for the people in authority, your word says that we should always keep them in remembrance. And for President Trump, Lord God, we thank you for his courageousness, for how bold he is. And Lord God, I pray that you would give him wisdom and discernment during such a time of, of crisis in our country. We pray for 
government officials. We pray for city officials. Lord God, we pray that not only will you give them wisdom, but Father God, you will give them a peace that surpasses all understanding. Father, we thank you that during this hard time that we're facing that you would unite this country. You know, bring us closer together, Father God, yes. during this time. Yes. Let, your, let, let your light shine, Father God. Raise up this kingdom and so that the world can see, Father God, that you are here with us. Yes. You would never leave us nor forsake us. Yes. And Father God, we thank you. We love you. Yes. We honor you. And we give you all the praise. And in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Dear Lord, we humbly come before you today with prayer and petition, Lord. We ask that you be with the medical and the healthcare community, Lord, as they are on the front lines right now yes. dealing with this epidemic, Lord, and we ask that you be with them, that you give them courage, dear Lord. You give all the paramedics, the administrators, the nurses, the first responders, that you give them courage to do their jobs, to live out your will for their lives, Lord. We ask that you give them a spirit of patience as they deal with a panicked public, Lord. We ask that you give them protection more than anything, yes. Lord. We ask that you protect them in their work. We ask that you protect their families that they come home to, Lord. Yes. We ask that you be there and comfort their loved ones. Yes. Lord, we ask that you be with our physicians and their assistants, Lord, as they deal with the public and, and make difficult decisions. We ask that you give them the Give them wisdom, Lord, the wisdom of Solomon. Give them discernment, Lord, as they deal with complex situations. Lord, we ask that you give them a spirit of compassion as, as they deal with patients who are afraid, dear Lord. And Lord, we ask that you are with the medical research, researchers as they search for efficient ways to test lots of people, mass people, dear Lord. We ask that you be with them as they learn how to treat this disease and make people as comfortable as possible as they, they overcome it, dear Lord. But most of all, we ask that, that you help them find the vaccine. Lord, you've already provided the answer. We just ask that you be with them as you guide them towards the answer to a vaccine and a cure. Lord, we ask these things in your son Jesus' name. Amen. Father God, we come before you this morning thanking you, first of all, for who you are thanking you for all that you've done and all that you continue to do. We thank you that you are the God who delivers. Yes. You are the God who sets free. Yeah. You are the God that healeth all thy diseases. So Father God, we come to you this morning to release our faith in the name of Jesus. In that name, Father, the blind has been made to see. The maimed have been made whole. The crippled have been made to walk. So, Father God, we put our trust in your name. So we release our faith asking you this morning to bring healing to all those that have been infected by the coronavirus. We ask you, God, to bring healing to all those that have been affected by the virus. We ask you, God, to be the comforter that you are. For your word declares that you comfort all that mourn. So we give you praise for it right now in the name of Jesus. We ask you, God, to be with the families of those that have been affected, that may be living in fear or tormented. We ask that you will comfort them. Give them a peace. Give us your peace that surpasses all our understanding. And it's in the mighty name of Jesus Christ we ask you and we thank you. Amen. Lord, I just right now just pray for um, your peace and your power to be upon us. Lord, your word says that you did not give us a spirit of fear, but a spirit of power and of love and of a sound mind. And Lord Jesus, you said that the greatest among us will be those who serve. And Lord, in the midst of this opportunity and this crisis that's happening in the world, Lord, that, Lord, your word is full of stories where your servants, Lord, were in the midst of crisis and opportunities, but instead of 
than being paralyzed by fear. They were empowered by your spirit and by boldness and with confidence, Lord. And Lord, they just took it as an opportunity, Lord, to not only step forward in your power and your boldness, but Lord, to step forward because they knew it was an opportunity for you to be glorified, Lord. I think of King David. Lord, the Israelite army was paralyzed by fear. And this giant, Lord, he stepped forward in boldness. And he knew in confidence that this day, the Lord God was going to be glorified. And all of the world was going to know it and see it. And Lord, I, I, I was just reading about Joseph, Lord, when, Lord, he was sold as a slave. And Lord, he was in a crisis. And instead of him being paralyzed by fear, he went to Potiphar's house and was just emboldened and empowered. And Lord, through that, you glorified him and magnified him. And shortly thereafter, Lord, he was in charge of the entire house and all of his affairs. And Lord, your word said that through that, Lord, you flourished. Lord, just give us a spirit of boldness and confidence, Lord. Your word says that those who trust and have confidence in the Lord, we will be like a tree that's planted by the streams of water. And Lord, your word says in that scripture that even when the season of drought, even when the crisis comes upon it, your people will flourish. Our spirit, our leaves will be flush and green. So Lord, help us to remember Lord Jesus' words to uh, find a way to, to serve. Give us wisdom to know the right opportunities. Lord, just, just give us wisdom to be bold and confident and to step forward and to, um, to just let, let your light shine through us. And as King David did on that day when an entire nation was paralyzed, he stepped forward because he knew that you were going to be glorified. Yes. And he was confident in it. In the name of Jesus, amen. Well, I hope today that as we look into God's Word and as we spend time in prayer, that all of us will be mindful of those words of the Apostle Paul that he spoke in Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 and 7, when he reminded us, hey, don't be anxious about anything, but about everything in prayer and in supplication. And then he says, with thanksgiving, let your request be known to God bring everything to him and then and then when we've chosen peace when we've chosen to worship over worry we've chosen faith over fear we've chosen to pray over to panic when we have realized that we can actually own our peace then the peace of God that passes all understanding will guard your hearts it'll guard your minds how not through our circumstances not through news cycles not through world stories but through Jesus Christ our Lord. Today, wherever you are, whatever you're experiencing, my prayer for you is that you would invite the peace of God to come over your life. That you would tell God, God, I don't want a leased peace or a borrowed peace or a peace that I ever have to return. I want a peace that lasts forever. I don't want a hand-me-down peace. I want a peace that I can own. And that's His desire for you. So wherever you are, Whatever you're facing, I pray that you'll pray today for that peace. Father, in the name of Jesus, the strong, strong Son of God, I pray today that the people that are on line doing church together in separate places, I pray that your peace would invade our spaces. God, that you would arrest our spirits, that we would know that the God of all peace is for us. And if He's for us, then who dare stand against us? Remind us of the peace that you promised us. In the strong, strong name of the only Son of God, we pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen, amen, and amen. Now what I'd like for you to do this week is I'd like for you to be very attentive to 
our website. Be very attentive to what's going on on our Cornerstone app. We'll post on Facebook and social media. The whole nation right now is on a week-by-week basis. We're going to do our very best to communicate through email. We'll communicate through our social media advances. If you didn't receive email from us this week, all you have to do is go online. There's an email there that if you go to cornerstoneathens.cc, you can email us, send us your contact. We'll make sure everything gets put into our computers the way it needs to be so communication with you is as best as we can offer. We love you. God loves you. God's for us. And this is still a great, great time to be alive in the world that we're in today. Together, we can overcome. God bless you. I love you. Have an awesome, awesome day. The worship team is going to lead us out in worship. So just join with them for one more song. God bless you guys.